So hello and thank you so much for inviting me to speak today. I am Linda Magistris, I'm Chief Executive and Founder of the Good Grief Trust. This is the reason I founded the charity. This is Graham, my partner. I was with him for eight years and sadly he died of a soft tissue sarcoma in 2014. Um, I really struggled. I struggled very badly when he died. I'd lost my dad actually 20 years ago this month. Um, but when Graham died, he was my partner, he was my best friend. Um, he then ended up in a pot on a shelf and that did something to my mental health that I couldn't understand at all. I then went to my GP and I said, look, I'm really struggling very badly. He signposted me to a big national charity. Um, sadly, they didn't have any uh, support, any counselling in my area and the waiting list was something like six months. I couldn't wait six hours at that point. I was really, really on my knees. So a friend of mine lived in a neighbouring borough and I fibbed. I said, I, I live there. I got some counselling. I went for four sessions. Um, it didn't really help me at all. I'd never been to a counsellor before. Um, for me, there wasn't a way forward. I just saw a closed door. I needed to find a way through it. And I needed to find a way of being productive with my life because it was so debilitating to me. I went back to my GP. And he basically said, look, there was nothing else that he knew of. He offered me pills. Um, I don't take even a paracetamol. So that was no good for me. And I realized then, having le left that surgery and gone back to the hospitals where Graham was treated, that there was a massive lack of signposting to tailored support that, that was right for the individual. I actually went into one of the Macmillan offices in the hospital where Graham was treated, a big London teaching hospital. And I said, look, what do you do for bereavement support? Because they had every type of literature for every type of cancer. And they actually said to me, look, I'm really sorry we don't do anything, but if you'd like to start a support group, that would be fantastic. That was completely alien to me. I walked out of there and that was pretty much my light bulb moment. I thought we need to find a way of signposting people to tailored support. It can't just be me. Um, so in 2016, we launched the goodgrieftrust.org. We now have over 800 local, regional and national support services. In between then, I've done a lot of research. I've piggybacked on the um, NCPC, building on the best um, project. I visited acute trusts. I spoke to bereavement teams. I spoke to chief execs of all the charities. There seemed to be a lack of signposting. There was a real difficulty with keeping bereavement support information up to date. It was just hard copies. How would you go into include all those types of um, charities and support services, all those specialist helping group, help groups um, for epilepsy, for miscarriage, for cancer, etc. You can't do it, it's just not possible. So we realised obviously there needs to be an online resource for the bereaved as well as the health professionals. So now you literally put in your postcode if you've lost a child, a sibling, a friend, a work colleague, anybody, anywhere in the country, under any circumstance, can find the support that's right for them. But then we realised um, there needed to be a tangible um, resource as well. It, you can't rely on just an online website. Um, so we then launched the Good Grief Card. It's in conjunction with the website. So it's a condolence card. It's combined condolence and signposting tool. It has a little plastic credit card inside. A lot of the bereavement support information is overwhelming. There's so much in there. And often the charities and support services and the links are at the back. It's too overwhelming for the, for the bereaved. When I was bereaved and obviously through the research that we've done, it's exhausting. It's so exhausting. To try and find the right service for you is a huge, huge task. We wanted to make it very, very simple. This is help and hope in one place. The bereaved just take that plastic credit card and it signposts them direct to the website. And during COVID, we've now updated that plastic credit card. We've got the National Bereavement Support Helpline. We've also got the four, the three um, UK 24-hour helplines. That can be changed whenever we need to, to um, uh, update it. There is a UK postcode lottery. We know that across the country. There are pockets of excellence in bereavement care, and there are pockets of uh, places where they're absolutely nothing. This is just a few of the um, Facebook posts that we've had, the messages that we have on our extensive social media platforms. 
We have over 21,000 people um, on our Facebook page. We have over 12,500 on our Twitter. These are organic followers. Um, people desperate. I'm in Halifax. I lost my dad 40 years ago. I need someone to talk to now. I'm in the Scottish Isles. My child died two years ago and there's no one here to support me. I need to meet others who understand. I am desperate. I'm in the Isle of Wight. My husband died five months ago and my doctor can't find help for me. There's nothing available in my area. I'm really struggling. We see this time and time again. So bringing all those support services together will help the bereaved to find a choice of immediate support that's right for them. So we have brought all the UK bereavement support services together under one umbrella. Our aim is to repair the holes in the current bereavement net and create a uniform standard of bereavement care. Provide our Good Grief card. Our vision is that that card is mandatory. It's free of charge and it's available to every frontline service, every community service and emergency service. Also crematoriums, funeral directors, schools, universities. These are just some of the thoughts. Um, we've put in a proposal to government recently for the Good Grief card to become mandatory. We've got Sharon White here, who is head of SAFNA, who says they're delighted to be working with us because um, the tragic associated deaths um, that have been dramatically impacting so many of their families, children and young people, it's imperative that they are armed with the resources to facilitate early intervention and support. And the same thing comes from a GP here and one of our community healthcare um, workers who say, please, please seriously consider the provision of the cards to be given to all bereaved people. So in 2017, we also launched um, the All Party Parliamentary Group on Bereavement Support, working with Carolyn Harris. We are still Secretariat for that. It's a very active group and we have, well, actually it says 85 there. We've got over 100 members now. Um, we also, in 2018, launched our Good Grief pop-up cafes. So we are an umbrella organisation. We want to bring people together. We want to connect people in the community. So those pop-up cafes last year were launched uh, to run on a monthly basis. We had them running in London, the Isle of Wight, in Harrogate, all over the country. And sadly, because of COVID, we had to shut those down. But then we converted them and we've been running virtual cafes for six months now three times a week, bringing the bereaved together online. Uh, we also have an LGBTQ um, cafe and we're just launching our virtual student cafes to support the university um, community. We've been doing a lot of work with the um, Department of Health over the COVID um, pandemic. And we've now updated these websites. Again, we can't rely on just a couple of um, charities being uh, given to the bereaved. We now have the Good Grief Trust and key charities and support services. We've updated the NHS website, the Gov UK Europe website and the DWP, and we're working our way through them now. So, very excited about this year. We would love you all to get involved in our National Grief Awareness Week, which launches again this Christmas, the 2nd to the 8th of December. Last year, we spearheaded this campaign we realised there was no overarching awareness week, which again was really, really lacking in the UK to bring everyone together to talk about grief and bereavement on a national platform. So this year we have huge ambitions for this. We are working with government and St Paul's um, and all charities and support services under our umbrella. We would love Downing Street, City Hall, St Paul's and key buildings across the country to light up in yellow during the awareness week on the end of the week on the 8th of December at 8pm. We've also asked for a minute silence so we're really hoping that we can get the nation to come together as a community and support the people that clearly who have had such significant bereavements this year through Covid and under any other circumstance but have been affected by the restrictions. Our key message this year is share your story. Sharing your story is something that many people have sadly not been able to do this year. Those deaths have been so quick and so dramatic and so catastrophic. We want to give people the opportunity to share their story. This is one of the posters um, that we've um, designed this year. Your story could become someone's hope. That we hope that the National Grief Awareness Week will be a beacon of light for people at Christmas, leading up that very, very difficult time of year. These are some of the posters we have in our portfolio from last year's campaign, which was the inaugural year. We reached 3.34 million. This year, we hope that we'll reach more on social media because we know clearly we've all got to come together and support anyone who's bereaved. 
One of our key um, asks this year is a 24-hour bereavement helpline during that week. We would love all the bereavement helplines to come together and bring a community of volunteers um, together because we know that that week and leading up to Christmas will be so poignant for so many people. This is our cam campaign branding. We'd love you all to get involved. We've got t-shirts, we've got pin badges. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been a useful um, presentation. Thank you.